Hello. Well, this is the third video in my trilogy on river piking, tidal rivers. Now, tidal rivers are without a doubt my favourite type of rivers. I started off fishing like your normal stretches below weirs and that. And uh, eventually I started, tar this is a long, long time ago, I was actually targeting a 30 pound fish that was made it into the papers a few times, not a million miles away from home. Uh, and what I didn't actually realise not, not, not many people realise it, apart from a couple of them. That fish had actually moved under a weir and moved into a tidal stretch. And uh, <coughs> that's where I learnt to fish for tidal fish. Sadly, I never caught that fish. It dropped in weight. Uh, I know a few people who did catch it, but I went on to catch a lot of fish. It took me a couple of seasons to get to grips with tidal rivers. And uh, learning how to fish them is the most enjoyable thing. Now, if I were you, I'd have a look on the map, measure like 10 miles away from the sea, and uh, that's a good place to start. And uh, get down there and enjoy yourself. These fish haven't seen many hooks, they haven't been caught, and I reckon most tidal rivers have fish over 25 pound in them at any time. 30 pound fish, I think most of the tidal rivers around my way have done 30 pound fish, but you spend a lifetime and you'll never see one. I've never seen one. Uh, there's a few anglers who catch a, several 30 pounders in a lifetime, but then out of me and my, a couple of friends of mine, we've had literally hundreds of 20 pound fish with quite a lot over 25. And the biggest we've had out of a tidal river is 29, but multiple 29s. But big 20s are definitely doable. And I've had several braces out of uh, tidal rivers, braces of 20 pound fish, three 20 pound fish in a day is the most I've ever had. So you can enjoy some fantastic sport. We can start the video now. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, I haven't done one for a while. I'm also going to cover a few bases and what I had last year, two 30 pounders. It's not too shabby, is it? And uh, we'll see if we can catch a fish out of this stretch. And uh, I'll probably lose a few and then we'll move to another stretch. It'll be easier to film on. Right, got the first rod out on the tidal river. And it looks like I've got to take already. Oh, I haven't even set the camera up. If you can see that float. All right, I'll get the GoPro set up in a minute. I'm going to have to sort this out. That float's going. <coughs> I know there's fish there, so I'm going to put a bit of chop in. Now that'll just there's a lot of water that's not been fished below me. Hopefully that'll bring the fish into the swim. Right, while I'm waiting for the water level to go down, I'm going to go through the new bits of tackle that I've started using. I don't really change my tackle. The rods are Dave Lumpy ones. <coughs> On these sort of rivers, I just use one alarm at the front. I'm looking at my floats. Floats are the indication. You don't rely on alarms down here. Uh, there's no place for backbiters or any of that. Uh, one thing I have purchased this year is a new fishing reel or new fishing reels. El Shimano DL 6000s. They're beautiful reels. Uh, the XTEs I've got still going strong, but uh, they're probably due for another service. And uh, these wheels have got beautiful clutch. I'm not saying they're better than the XTEs, but if they are last anywhere near as long, I'll be very happy. All right, <coughs> the water level's dropped a little bit. I was able to get over here. There we have, second rod. I'm only fishing right in the margins here. There's a lot of flow coming down here. Uh, you don't need to be in the middle of it. It's a gravel bottom out there. But I've had some big pike around here in the past. Stunning down here. One problem you've got, there's not really much option in the May of moving around. Two boats have been out for half an hour. Got to be a bit quiet because people go shooting in that round here and uh, pays to be quiet. A 
water level is actually dropping now. When I got here, I reckon it's dropped a foot since I've been here, which is only half an hour. I'll be able to get to the banks in another hour. It's quite handy, isn't it, really? I've already got a wet foot. Interesting, though, you like the first bit of it. Tides on rivers. Now, my without a doubt, in my opinion, the tides are absolutely crucial. Bigger the tide, the better on most rivers. On this river, it wouldn't be fishable where I am on a big tide. We'd be underwater. But on normal so on normal rivers, yeah, you want to be there. Most people, when the tide starts flooding in, people pack up and go home. That is madness. That you want to be there, uh, well, you'd be there at first light, but you need to be there an hour before that tide starts flooding. When that tide starts coming in, we're not going to see that because the way the tides have fallen today, we're not going to it was high tide when I got here tonight. Maybe we'll see the tide backing up on another river, but you want to be there an hour before that tide backs up because you you be a man of braces. A fish, I've well, got a few braces of 20 pound fish within minutes of the tide turning. You don't even know the tide's turned. It's uh, you can just tell by your floats. It's literally 15 minutes before the tide turns. I'm convinced fish just run up the river. They follow, of course, fish move up. When the tide starts pumping through, it's quite hard to fish. All you've got to do is work out where you can fish baits. If you're doing a lot of uh, roving, you want to work out where you're going to be when that tide backs up. Ideally, you'll have an eddy in front of you and a tree, a tree going out stops debris because you'll have seaweed and all sorts of stuff, trees coming up. If you can tuck a float behind a tree, I wouldn't bother with the far margin unless you really know a spot, but I fish the near margins, make sure you can fish them in close. If you're on a big straight, I wouldn't be fishing there when the tide comes in, you want to find somewhere where there's trees, cover. But first 15 minutes of that flood tide, I've seen people pack up, that's when you're going to get most action. Yes. Tidal rivers. No debris coming up this one. Monster tide. Floats tight in the margins, and uh, yeah, it looks good. Plan your day around it as well. There's lots of swims on a tidal river, and uh, <coughs> I've got divisions of swims. I've got like division premier swims, division one, two, and three, and they all get a different amount of time. Now, a really good swim on a tidal river, if you know it really well, two hours tops. The other swims I've given an hour, half an hour, move through them quite quickly. As I say, I use dead baits. You can use live baits, and live baits will help you cover the water quicker, but they also slow you down. That is a big tide in the road the track there that's underwater. Uh, I was actually fishing down there earlier. That is a monster. I'm actually now concerned about my car because if it comes over it's quiet and down now well it's that quiet I've only been here half an hour one take water levels drop quite a lot I don't know if you can see my float out there but those floats are fixed at the bottom the ET nod floats very handy for tidal rivers because as the water level drops the float goes to an angle and when it starts laying flat I'll uh, tighten up a little bit so the float stands upright. It's very handy for when the tide starts to come in because you won't see it, but you'll see the float start to bury slightly and you can just let a little bit more line out. These floats are ideal. Probably I started using these on tidal rivers and then realised they were quite versatile and I've been using them all rivers now. Just put a bit of chop in here. So these river conditions are pretty close to perfect. I'm quite disappointed I haven't had one yet. The only thing I'd say is I'm fishing it on an outgoing tide. If I fished here as it came up, I hadn't caught anything, I'd move straight away. The tide going out, I'll give it a bit longer. Well, it's very early days. I haven't got an option to move in this swim. <laughs> I haven't got chess waders.
trying to yell out. Sure you saw that uh, a screaming run there it was going for a little while hopefully i caught it on camera hit into it and quite a decent fish i'd say i had a good look at it i had it under the rod tip Pfft, i didn't have a really good look at it but i'll say it's on 40 15 pounds i don't think it was a monster interesting i was just thinking about upping sticks and moving but i put a bit of bait in and it's going to draw there's a lot of water below me it can draw fish up from and that tells me the fish are here but they're not feeding hard so maybe i'll stay here a bit longer on a eel favorite bait to lose fish on ordnance survey map uh, measure 10 miles from the sea now feel free to go below that but good 10 miles is a good starting point uh, you'll find a lot of eels down there and a lot of coarse fish and i'm, I'm convinced the biggest fish on these tidal venues which you never quite know what they are they're, they're below there they're they're feeding on mullet and eels and that's where they get to like the 30 pound barrier most turtle rivers around my way have done 30 pounders over the last 40 years but you spend your lifetime trying to catch one of them um, but be realistic set yourself a target of 20 23s but 25 pound fish upper 20s are definitely realistic possibilities anyway let's see if i can get one on the bank Well, it's not looking so good on this river. <coughs> Take first thing, and then I lost that fish a little while ago, which was a bit disappointing. But normally I come down to this spot for numbers of fish. It doesn't get fished a lot, but usually I get a few fish. And the fact I've only had a one, one lost pike, you could spend all day here. But my plan is I'm trying to do something about catching some, doing some tidal rivers. We'll go to another tidal river and have a look similar to this bit smaller right let's just quick go back to last season well last season absolutely mega year for me probably the best year for big fish ever you would have seen the pike fishing 2 video uh, <coughs> i said uh filmed about this time like last year i was going to go somewhere and fish for a while because uh, a mate of mine had had a couple of fish well anyway i went there and i caught 31 pound pike caught it on video it's on there Anyway, <coughs> I went back there in October and I didn't expect to better that. I did. Basically, got to, I had a plan basically. It's not often plans work, but this one did. Got to the spot I wanted, uh, got the baits out. First bait, went out in the bait boat at first. Well, I cast them out and then I sent it out in the bait boat, dropped it off <coughs> about 100 yards, sent the second one out. The boat was halfway out and the first one went wound down, hit into that, and I got a 32, an obvious 30 pound fish, tail walking, fought like an absolute bugger. Uh, what I had a bit of a total disaster, almost total disaster. Heard something going through my rings, and I realized I'd picked up the wrong rod, which only had 100 yards of braid on it. What was going through my rings is a stop knot, and I was actually playing a 32 pound pike on 20 plus year old Daiwa sensor on. Uh, I must admit, I actually, it was quite emotional, it was proper bad angling, but I got it, got the braid back on the reel after a little while, breathed a sigh of relief, didn't stop the fish fighting, eventually it got caught on some rocks halfway out, thank God I had a rotten bottom, 
I use like heavy mono uh, lead link, which I scuff up with a pair of scissors so I can break it with my hands. Well, that went, that was dead mate, that was stale mate for a couple of minutes and then that link broke and I got it in. Uh, well, that was a fantastic session and uh, yeah, topped off my season last year with a personal best of 32 pounds, six ounces. Well, you can have a look at that and see what you think. I mean, trout water fish like that are lovely, they're gorgeous, but they're not comparable to fish from rivers like this. 25 pound fish out of a river like this is worth anything out of a trout water in my view. Not to everyone's, but you have to work for it. But yeah, hope you enjoyed that fish. And uh, yeah, this year started off equally as well. First trip of the year, first cast, 15 minutes late on a river I had, I mean, on a water I hadn't fished for like, 15 years, I'm pretty sure I caught the biggest fish in the lake straight away. I was taking out a mate uh, just to show him how to go through, the, uh, go through the actual motions of bike fishing. There you go. Since then, I've only done a couple of trips, but it's slowed down a bit. Rivers have been in flood all this year. Tidal rivers are pretty hard to gauge when they're in a flood. You've got to be very careful because, like, I've been caught out where it comes up when you've got two foot of flood water in it they come over the bank you can be cut off i've been cut off before and uh you'll be a bit careful anyway i hope you enjoy the video it's not finished yet i'm going to go to another river hopefully catch a few fish probably not i can see there the old tide's dropping quite a lot now uh just having a look at my gear there that's how i set the stuff up we've got the you know how to do the float ledger rig I use on all waters I fish it's ideal for tidal rivers uh, there's my new reel the new Sh the Shimano uh, DLs it's a bulletproof strong reel I like a big handle is it better than my old XTEs not sure about it it's gonna take me a long time they're getting serviced at the minute the clutch is the best clutch I've ever used I only use Shimano's I don't bother with anything else uh, clutch is absolutely brilliant on that drawbacks I would say the bait runner is quite tight that else when you're pike fishing you it's nice to have a nice free running bait runner uh, yes they're, they're a lovely reel probably about the same weight as my XTEs they don't hold as much line and I'd say the line lay is probably not as good but they, they're strong reels you've got a front drag best drag I've ever used uh, I'm happy with them I'll give you another review on those in a few years time uh, but solid bit of kit. Bigger the tide, the better, I find. <coughs> I'm convinced that big tides move the fish, so bigger the tide's going to move more fish. So you've got a, a row of like spring tides. Pretty convinced by the end of that, it would push the fish up in the river. You also find on proper tidal rivers, they're nigh on impossible to fish on a big spring tide lower down. On the big springs, you probably will have to move up to the upper reaches of it. Uh, Otherwise you'll struggle and might drown. <laughs> Another thing with tidal rivers is that not that many people realise. The sea is actually warmer in the middle of in, in the winter. It's actually warmer than uh, the river. So the closer you are to the sea, the warmer the water is going to be. And uh, I'm 100% sure the coarse fish move, when it gets really cold, they move down. Worth keeping an eye on that. You can see those bits of debris behind me. That's where the water level goes. All of this is underwater a lot of time. Only on the lowest of low tides can you fish where I am now. Be very careful on a bit of water like this. I wouldn't advise coming down here on your own unless you really know it. may look very similar <coughs> but I have switched venues to another river now this isn't a good sign because if the fish had been on I wouldn't have moved away from the first river <coughs> and the first river was the one I would have expected to catch a lot more fish this is a, a smaller river it's a lot more pressure but it's done some huge fish over the years basically my plan was there might have been a few people here this morning uh, 
I might be able to get the tide backing up later today. I might even fish into darkness. I'm not going to fish loads of swims because I've only got the afternoon. But I, I've employed a different tactic. I'm not going to say anything unless it works. Uh, I've got baits out in a couple of spots. I know where I'm going to move to. This is where knowing the river already comes in. It's a bit of a nuisance I haven't got a big tide today that I can like, if I fish a big tide, I know the fish aren't there. But <clears throat> I happen to know that Nigel hasn't even had a take, but that doesn't actually surprise me that much. I think the rivers have got a lot to cope with these days around here. What with the uh, seals running up the river, that's always been the case, but they run up the river, chase them up the river for them to be eaten by otters. Not ideal, is it? I think Chris Packham has a lot to answer for. I think someone should introduce a couple of Bengal tigers into his kitchen and see how he copes. It'd make a really good film. Anyway, I'm only joking there. I'm sure they wouldn't want to eat him. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Baits are deployed. The river looks good. The only thing I've got against this one, <clears throat> I'm sure it was fish today. And uh, I'm sure it was fish yesterday. Never say never. I think I'm a better angler than the other people. <laughs> I hope there's some tips on tidal rivers that are coming quite handy. Uh, oh yeah, I did fantastically well last year. Think about subscribing, liking, any comments, uh, feel free to leave them. I'm always, uh, there's always more to learn in fishing, especially on tidal rivers. <coughs> Depending where you live, I should imagine they're all quite different, but get down there and try them out. You won't regret it. <laughs>